None of us had ever seen a virus-based health crisis like this. We were all being introduced into this landscape of a major health crisis of international proportions and concern. This is what this virus looks like. I'd seen the outbreak firsthand already, and I was interested to go back and see how it was progressing. But I was really eager for an opportunity, which Geographic provided, to take a deeper look at what was going on around Ebola. Something that's really fascinating about Ebola virus is that every time it spills over from sort of the animal community, the natural world, into people, it happens in places like this, remote forest communities. And inherently that means that the people who experience the initial front line of the virus are people who have the least access to education and the other elements of the state. We wanted to see where all of this began. Uh, and it began in a very small community in, uh, in the forest region of southeastern Guinea. The people in Miliandu were terrified. They had no idea what was killing all of these people. You can imagine the fear of a group of people where all of a sudden people are dying in droves in this village. We are way out in the equatorial forest following uh, a couple of bushmeat hunters who are hunting for monkeys. We went to follow bushmeat hunters because traditionally men who are hunting in the woods have typically been patient zero in a number of, of outbreaks. We went out and we went a couple of days hunting monkeys and stuff like that and then eventually they I think started to get a sense that I didn't have any nefarious agenda or something. They said, you know, if you really want to see how we do this, we have to make the clothes. And I said, what are the clothes? <laughs> and he said, well, we make this thing that we've been making for centuries, which is an outfit made of the bark of trees, fitted into various pieces, and then painted. And ultimately, they crafted these outfits that really resemble something that looks like a leopard. As a photographer, you're asked to put yourself in positions where the risk levels are high to see burials, to see body collection, to see people who are infected with the virus. So you have to be in that proximity. I went to the Hastings uh, Ebola Treatment Unit, which is just outside of Freetown. This is a really kind of horrific scene behind me here. Uh, an advanced Ebola patient who's quite delusional. Sometimes the disease is intense. It causes delusions in the mind. And this guy has tried to escape from one of the highly quarantined wards here in this holding facility at Hastings. This is really the, the, the graphic elements of how bad Ebola can be. Some of the attendants approached him and he was carried back into the isolation unit and I was told by the, uh, the doctor in charge that he died not long after the picture was taken. When he emerged, I thought, this is a terrible situation. And I, I don't want to make this picture, but I have to make this picture. Previously, I think it was somewhat easy to write off. I mean, you have relatively small outbreaks in very isolated areas, and they would sort of flare up and then disappear. Hopefully, the level of devastation that this outbreak created will create some type of shift in terms of the imperative to figure this out.